Ahoy, my friends, Ryder here, and welcome back to another Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis video. Today, I'm going to be getting into the patch updates for the new Final Fantasy VI crossover banner event, and basically everything dropping into the game, info, or actually Guild War number 5, basically starting right now. And essentially, I'm just going to be going over everything. I did take a look at the data mine today, and I am going to say that I think that... Tifa's banner is basically the last thing that I expected, but we'll, we'll get to that when we get to that. So let's just go down here and I'm just going to go over the uh, updates. I didn't do a news update on Monday. I'm basically taking like five to 10 days off from life right now, but I can't not do a patch update video for all of you guys. It's just, it's always the most exciting time of the week, right? But we are getting a new Crisis Core chapter. Let's take a look right here. And it looks like with the new chapter release, we are going to get some four star plus weapon guaranteed draw tickets, memory vouchers, and more. For a limited time, Zack and Angeal's gained experience is increased by 300%. So if you guys haven't finished leveling them up, now is a good time to do that. Log in during the period to get a total of blue crystal times 1500, a five star weapon guaranteed draw ticket, and more. So always happy to see blue crystals. And yeah, that's looking cool. All right, I'm going to jump back to the notice from Monday here. So new chapter, Crisis Core, Chapter 5. I remember this chapter playing Crisis Core. It's in the snow, and Zack has to kind of sneak into the base. It's one of those missions that you need to do to get the Platinum Trophy. You can't get seen by anyone. I wonder if there, we're going to be sneaking around like that in this map. It'll be cool to see. So that's cool to have another story chapter out right now. Here we have the guild ranking battle number five. Pretty curious what bat or what boss we're going to be fighting here. So hopefully they give us some information. Uh, let's see here. Doesn't look like there's much information. We'll probably check it out at the end of this video when the boss defeated. Blah 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 blah. Okay, here it is. Strategy information: the lightning element is effective against Zetant Donder. Okay, so we've had the, uh, the oh, I can't remember the name, the Zatant Rattel, the Mole Crawler, right, which are basically like this. So I'm guessing this is going to be super, super, super tanky. Uh, the Zatant Donder, that's a new one. The boss uses mode annihilation immediately after the battle begins to drastically increase its own physical defense and magic defense. The force gauge electric absorption is decreased by inflicting lightning damage, and when the force gauge is fully depleted, power, conver power conversion is used to drastically increase the boss's magic attack. Okay, so basically the boss is going to buff its defenses at the beginning of the fight. It's going to go into electric absorption, which we need to basically break by doing lightning damage and then when it's depleted it's going to increase its magic attack and then use the lightning magic attack prismatic ray so very much like the Zatant Rattel. Then it follows up with emergency cooldown to drastically reduce own physical defense and magic defense. So I'm guessing that's when we're really going to be able to do our damage. Lightning abilities are extremely effective. Furthermore, as powerful single attacks are used, protecting with provoke is effective. In addition, by setting additional equipment and increasing ability potency, even more damage can be inflicted. Okay, so it does look like Angeal is going to have his place to play. I'm guessing like a team is probably going to be like Angeal, Vincent, Tifa, maybe something like that we'll have to see how much physical uh weapons get kind of you know debuffed in this because i'm guessing that uh magic is, go is going to be boosted up for this fight all right let's go into it all right so here's the new banner final fantasy 6 crossover draw tifa on now i just want to say guys like this crossover has just been like the weirdest experience ever i feel like maybe it has for everyone i just feel like every weapon has just been like a head scratcher almost you know and it's just like why? <laughs> but I think that there are definitely some some pros to each of the weapons. I will personally be pulling for Aerith's Terra's Rod now. I didn't pull for it. I waited, and now I think I will be going for it. But as of November 20th, the Tifa crossover draw is on now. The uh, appearance rate of the weapon is 1.5 times that of the new weapon feature draw, which is great. And here it is right here. We have Tifa's Sabin's Claws, 4 ATB cost, command ability, Aura Cannon, inflicts up to 800% physical non-elemental damage upon all enemies, plus slightly increases caster's physical and magic attack, slightly being the kind of troublesome word there, and inflicts up to 40,000 additional physical non-elemental damage when the caster's HP is 50% or more. So essentially like a second Bahamut Greatsword without the haste, but with the addition of a physical magic attack buff. 
just kind of unexpected. I think for anyone that missed the Bahamut Greatsword and didn't pull for it at all, you're probably pretty excited. Just, just to have something like this for farming is great, and it's definitely had its cheese uses in actually a lot more fights than I thought would happen since the Bahamut Greatsword came out. So in that regard, it's good. But for people who have the Bahamut Greatsword, I'm going to have to really take a look at this when I do my to pull or not to pull video and really break everything down. I'm going to look at the different costumes, look at the different weapons. I'm going to compare everything just because I feel like this has just been so out of left field, this weapon right here. All right, so we have Sabin Style right here, our ability, physical and magic ward, boost physical and magic defense, and physical ability mastery right here, boost physical ability damage when attack stance command gauge is at max. So we'll have to compare this with like the Amaranth guys and then also the cow cowgirl, cowboy, cowgirl outfit, right? And then kind of just compare, but I do feel like a lot of these costumes from this crossover have been kind of a little bit of a letdown so which is kind of a bummer and my it for me personally I'm a little bit kind of bummed out by it all right but there's the ultimate weapon I would really love to get this this weapon can really make that ex2 ifrit fight a lot easier at the beginning because you can use this with an ATB boost weapon in order to get off red stardust ray before the first hellfire which makes it a lot easier uh, by setting up a da 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 da. All right, so let's go down. All right, so that's the banner right there. We'll take a brief look at it at the end of this video. Uh, there is a new step up draw, one loop only. Hopefully, the first draw is free. So we'll check that out in a little bit. Here is the Crisis Core chapter. Uh, there's not much information here. Chapter 5, In the Snowy Mountains, has been released, so that's going to be exciting to play that. And then it does look like there is some issues with the R ability Regan boost of Aerith's ultimate weapon, Princess Guard. Even though the amount of recovery when this command ability's effect Regan is activated refers to the healing potency of the effect's caster, the amount of recovery for the R ability Regan boost of Aerith's ultimate weapon refers to the healing potency of the effect's target not Aerith's healing potency. Okay, so that's not very good, right? So it's a bench, it's essentially healing based off the potency of the enemy instead of Aerith's healing potency. So as this is an issue with implementation, it is planned to be resolved in a late December update. Wow, so the weapon is bugged for a whole month. That's insane. So that the amount of Regan recovery granted by Regan boost will refer to the healing potency of the character possessing the Regan boost. That doesn't... Oh, gotcha. I see what you're saying. So, it's the Regan that you get, I'm guessing, I'm guessing this is AoE. I can't remember if this weapon is AoE or not. Maybe you guys can remind me of it. But if it is an AoE Regan, then I guess it would be based off the healing potency of the character that has Regan, I guess. A little bit unclear, but that's what I'm guessing it is. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's an AoE heal. Um, yeah, so that's a little bit strange. So it's not going to be as good on anyone but Aerith, because no one else in the party is going to be built for healing potency. So just keep that in mind, guys, if the Regan is not working up to par. All right, so let's jump into the shop, check out if there's anything new. Hasn't really been much new. All right, so here we have the 2500 uh, premium ticket pack. That one's good. Uh, like I always say, get the 2K one first, though. We have the Tifa individual ticket right here, only one. I feel like it's kind of a bummer that they ha they've taken away some of these packs, you know? So, But it is what it is. And so, yeah, this one looks to be just the same as all the other Final Fantasy VI crossover shops right here guys i'm gonna jump into the missions let's check out the campaign missions right here all right just finished that perfect let's go okay so let's jump over to oh sick i'll take that all right so new chapter release clear one battle consume one stamina here we have a hundred exchange memory vouchers clear 20 battles so nothing crazy right here guys but it should be pretty easy to accomplish all right that being said we already saw what the guild battle is going to be like, so now I'm just going to go to the draw. Is this first one free? So let's do this free draw right here. All right, and then we're going to take a look at this weapon, which I personally think that I will probably be skipping. I'm a little worried that they're going to have some fights where you can just use Cloud's Bahamut Greatsword in this new Tifa weapon to basically just cheese it with that flat AoE damage. But then there's a part of me that feels like they're not going to do that, so... It's hard to say, but the weapon is not super enticing to me personally. I feel like really nothing has been this entire crossover. Um, you know, they're kind of 
interesting and a little bit unique, but they all kind of miss something in my opinion. Aerith's is definitely the best. The R abilities are super good. Um, so let's go over here and let's just take a quick look at it. So let's try on the actual costume. I know that not a lot of people like this costume, but I think it's like, I think it's pretty chill. Like it looks like she's kind of like a new up and coming fighter. She looks comfortable, like she could throw some punches. Uh, I mean, it's definitely not the best Tifa costume in the game, not even close, but I, I don't think that it's terrible costume. I think it's pretty cool, actually. All right, now let's go check out the weapon right here and see what we got. All right, here we go. Level 120, base 5 star, deals 530% physical non-elemental damage. The physical magic attack buff goes low to mid, low to mid, all right? And there we go, when HP is 50% or more, deals 10,000. Now, the question is, does this hit high? I'm guessing that it does not hit high. Uh, so let's go to here, OB6. Oh, it does hit high. Interesting. So that changes it up a little bit. I thought it was going to be mid-mid. All right, but it is a double cast. Even at OB10, it goes low to high. Um, it's kind of a strange thing because if you have her Bahamut Claws, it boosts her magic attack to high. If you have the Amaranth Claws, it boosts her physical attack to high. And then it just does the extra kind of damage on the side, but it's lacking the haste right there. Luckily, it does have the 62 attack over 39 ability potency right there, which is still pretty, which is definitely good. Unlike Cloud, he kind of got shafted a bit in the R abilities. And then it has the X Sigil boost. I'll have to take a closer look at this. It's a little bit different than what I thought it was going to be, but whether or not it's actually worth pulling, I will have to check out in my to pull or not to pull video, which will be dropping tomorrow. But yeah, guys, that being said, that's going to basically conclude all of the updates. We'll be getting into the Guild War. I wish you guys the best out there, and I wish everyone in the Curseborn Alliance, all of the guilds, I think all 14 guilds, I hope all of you guys have the best time and enjoy the fifth guild battle. That being said, if you guys enjoyed this video today, please don't forget to drop a like, subscribe to the channel if you're interested in more Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis content. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.